Hey everybody, I'm here at the national headquarters for Cigar City Garage. Upstairs I'm going to show you some parts and pieces I have here. I'm trying to give you a, like a 101 on Zeus fasteners. A lot, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about these and figured this would be a good time to um, show you a little bit about Zeus fasteners because I know a lot of people get confused with sizes and everything so I'm gonna try to walk you through that and um, try to give you a little bit of heads up where I use them and why I use them how I use them so here goes nothing okay if you notice I got a pile of junk on the table typically You'll use two different sizes in race car fabrication. One's a number five and one's a number six. I use the number five stuff for lighter duty applications, just holding in a small panel or like a cover over the master cylinder, something like that. Then anything else, I'll use a number six. On this um, Henry J downstairs, you'll notice I use number five wing heads like this on the body. If you see that there, this is a self-ejecting wing head. I use those because these guys bought out an old speed shop that had like 5,000 of them. So I'm trying to use what they have. Typically, I will use a number six fastener to hold the body panel on, which is like this one here. But like I say, they owned them, I'm using them. Okay, the difference between the two a number five and a number six is the difference of the stem. On a number five fastener, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm going to try. The stem measures like 312. Okay. In a number six, the stem measures just a little, it's like 405. And I have various types of fasteners of so the wing heads. This is an oval headed fastener. This is like just a regular wing head fastener. Um, then I've got like a flush fastener, okay? Various forms here, self ejecting, and they come in colors too. You can get them black or um, you can get them chrome. Like that's, a, that's just a zinc plated one. But I know I have some chrome ones downstairs. Um, the next thing you're looking for on a fastener is the length of the fastener. When you measure a fastener, you measure from the head of the fastener to the ending slot. And this one here, if you measure it right, this one measures 500 which is a half inch and typically you can get them like through some of the mail order catalogs 450, 500, 550, 600, 650 the 500's I use in like when I'm fastening a drive shaft tunnel or a transmission tunnel in two 40,000 pieces of aluminum okay 550's will be like a thin piece of fiberglass to a piece of aluminum or aluminum to fiberglass and you know depending on the thickness of fiberglass like some of the cars I've built I've used like 650 long you know when you're attaching like a front end to a fiberglass body or something they ended up get, getting pretty lengthy um, one of the tools I didn't bring upstairs is a spring adjuster um, that that I got from a company called Millspec down in Florida they sell a lot of these type of fasteners too but if you're a drag racer um, you want to go to drag race solutions and get them because you call down there and talk to them they understand this stuff so if you have questions for them any oddball questions I know they can answer them they they make it real easy drag race solutions Scott Lemon so great group, group of people easy to deal with okay so I've talked a little bit about fasteners we got self ejectors, we got flush head, and then we've got oval head. When you do a flush head fastener, you use a tool like this, which came from mill spec. I'm hoping you can see that. 
I modified this one a little bit. Usually they put a bolt through it, but that's a dimpler. That makes that makes the dimple in the aluminum so the flush headed fastener will work. Tiny bit more labor. I mean, you can just drill a hole and use an oval head button or you can, you know, drill a hole and use a flush head button. Typically when I'm drilling the holes, I'll drill it to that size on that stem, which is like three-eighths of an inch. Use a step drill, of course. Okay, so we got the fasteners taken care of. What I do to mount a spring, okay? I have a tool like this, and it's got a Cleco in it. I'm hoping you all have heard of Clecos. Just like that, I'll drill my holes where I want all my buttons and my springs, and then I will Cleco this down and I can drill these holes. This one here is for a dash 6 spring which measures center to center inch and 3 eighths. A dash 5 spring measures 1 inch and I'll show you that right now. So if you can see the difference in these springs, the top one's a dash 6, the bottom one's a dash 5. The dash 6 got a little heavier wire. They just last longer, hold up better in race applications when you're mounting bigger panels and stuff like that. Um, when I worked it undercover, when I first went there, we used like a dash 4 fastener to hold the dash covers in. It was a real tiny thing, real hard to hard to get set, but they were nice if you needed to get the dash cover off. But you can see the difference in the spring. One inch between centers, one and three eighths between centers. Like I say, I typically try to stick to the number six stuff where I can. And they make different heights here, but that one there is like three-eighths tall. That works for just about everything. That one there is about three-eighths tall as well. So, tabs. We've got a few options here. If you've probably seen on my Henry J down there, I welded that type of tab to a little piece of eighth inch flat stock with some holes for 832 screws and mount them in different applications and if you look at that that is a number six tab for a number five spring and that's a number five tab for a number five spring they do make a difference if you try to mount fiberglass to this tab with the number five button they wobble or the pieces wobble around too much you need you need the stem of that button to go into that hole and sort of hold it in location. If you try to use a button like that, I can't hang on to it very well. In a tab like this, there's a lot of slop. The panels will vibrate around a lot. So if you're using those type of tabs, make sure you use the right tab for the right fastener, okay? Typically, when I'm doing like a heavier duty application, I'll use a tab like this. This is a number six tab that welds on. It's a more heavy duty tab. They last a little bit longer in extreme applications. The lightweight tabs like these are nice. They look cool, but there's sometimes you've got to use a heavy duty tab like this just to hold parts and pieces in place. And if you'll notice, that hole is smaller than that hole. It works well if you're just using a button, but if you use a self-ejecting fastener, they want to hang up in that hole. So I always take a step drill if I'm using a self-ejecting fastener and drill that hole out one size and deburr it. Then after that, I typically will weld these tabs on Defenders or wherever I can where they're metal. I'll weld them direct to the metal TIG weld them But if some of them goofy applications, you'll get to use a tab like this. I think this is from Moroso It's a used one, but you know, you just keep them around just in case This uses a one-inch spring They make them for um, The inch and three H number six spring. This is for a number five spring but it's got the tab pre-built in it, so you can either rivet it or bolt it on a fender. Hopefully you can see that okay. So I'm, um, I'm trusting this all makes sense to you. So that's my information on Zeus fasteners. Like I say, this, this little dealio here is basically, basically a piece of one-inch flat stock that I made, okay? 
then it just speeds up the process of drilling the drilling the holes for the springs like I say I'll click it down drill those holes pull this out and then I drill the bigger hole so the button will clear accordingly but that's my scoop on Zeus fasteners I think what I'll do now is I'll let I'll wander downstairs with you and show you progress on the Henry J and what we got going on on the old 50 Chevy okay and maybe Jerry's car I think you can see that here we go here's the rest of the shop I'm sure some of you have seen this before my office over there we'll head down to the second floor the main floor and I'll show you what's going on picked me up a set of Moroso front tires for my next project here's a Henry J as you can see it's got an engine in it part of one anyways these guys discussed with me that they may be running different engine options from time to time so what I did knowing they'd always run the same transmission I built a removable front cross member in this car if you can see it there it's got half inch bolts on each side and I will finish gusseting those tabs but I built that cradle to go underneath the motor so if they decide they want to put an FE motor or a Chevy motor in here I can just remake that cross member that goes from side to side and remount the motor I think I've told you before I'm going to try to get you in here close I use the block saver as a mid plate and I weld these tabs on like this and bolt them to the frame you know weld the tab on the frame and bolt them with four or five sixteenths bolts I do that on both sides to catch the middle of the motor so you can you know it helps torsional strength wise torsionally to take some of the load off the motor mounts and then you can pull the transmission out to service the clutch <coughs> and not have the motor fall out of the car sorry about that to clear my throat a little bit I'll walk you around this side and try to get you inside and show you the what I've done in here this car is set up for either this four-speed transmission which I think it's like a older Liberty because it's in an iron top loader case it's an iron case transmission and I fixed all the shift linkages and everything all that stuff was all messed up and I the, with the cross member I'm hoping you can see this down in there I put the cross member behind the transmission and then I made an adapter plate that went from the trans to the cross member so that if he does put a power glide in here which I have in the basement I just have to make that adapter plate to go in I'll make the tin work all clear so I'll show you what I did with the clutch linkage you can see this it's got one of them real good clutch forks in it um, from RAM and I made a hex shaped adapter with a left and right handed thread so we can adjust the pedal location you know in relationship to the driver and then this back here if you can see this this is my clutch stop so you can set the air gap on the clutch typically with this ram style clutch you want 70 thousandths of air gap so the bell housing in the bottom I've drilled a two inch hole in the bottom so you can get feeler gauges there and then over on this side I'm hoping you can see it I drill that hole there for base adjustment in the clutch so you can rotate the engine over and adjust the spring pressure on the clutch then that little dealio right there that little tube that's the shifter mount for the automatic if he ever puts one in it it'll be underneath the floor hidden and what I do is I pin them so you can pull a quick pin and get shifter out of the way but that's all tied in there pretty good I have a little bit of final welding to do I finished plugging the holes in the dashboard all that stuff's done so basically I'm, I'm working on steering next as you can see I know where this piece goes for my steering so basically I've got to get my column in that will mount like off of a saddle down on this tube here if you can see that down here then this this type of tube will connect here and 
there'll be a U-joint here and it'll come up to the driver's area with a clamp in column so I wanted to put that piece of tube in out there just to make sure it cleared the oil filter so if you can see here I got this dealio set up so it just clears that Fram oil filter and I think what they did is like their race motor has a 90 degree adapter on it so I always try to consider those things and headers and everything else when I'm doing this kind of stuff so took me a while to get a core engine core but I got one and all that stuff's in there final mounted okay 50 Chevy it's up on a lift but I think you'll be able to see some of this stuff Ronnie's been working super hard on this one and he's got the bottom done and the wheel lip all the way around he's working on attaching it on the inside now all that stuff was rusted out so he's replaced the wheel lip all the way around like I say he's working on the inner part of it now we'll try to get this all touched up and blended in somewhat and of course the Mustang body it's tied up to the ceiling I use three um, come alongs to pull it up off the chassis it's setting over here just out of the way for right now I'm trying to rearrange I had to get the forklift moved I finally got my forklift running and moving around my buddy Kenny fixed the front axle for me had the kingpin bearings were shot on one side and the wheels about ready to fall off so we got that fixed and um, it's running good and I, I want to take you back in the back and show you the Chevy 2 my someday car hopefully sooner than later but there's not much left my buddy Doug's been working on this cutting the rusty parts out you can see here he cut the that part of the A-pillar off and he's dressed up these so we can box them and the quarters are complete, completely gone off of it and the rear filler panel as you can see how I got this braced up here I think I told you guys before the body set 12 inches off the top of the jig and then I've got my fixturing that I pulled off of the Mustang that I can use in here to help hold the frame rails but my main concern now is getting this thing media blasted so we can find all the rust holes and get them repaired and then I'll get the quarter song and the deck lid fit and the doors fit and everything else to the shell before I even build a chassis so I got a ways to go call the media blaster and see if I can get this rusty wreck cleaned up so that's me I always pick the hard projects but anywho that's what I got going on in here in the shop Mustangs hanging from the ceiling Henry J's about done that want to be tin work like I say I'll finish the steering and get the wheel tubs in that and then I think I'm gonna build a cart with casters on it that I can set this car on to do tin work so we can move things around and stuff like that so I just wanted to share with you guys show you what was going on in the shop and my thoughts on Zeus fasteners hopefully that helps a little bit how I do things I mean I know it's not rocket science but I've had a lot of people ask me questions on Zeus fasteners so thanks for watching